Good morning! Today we're going to look at the physics in Spider-Man. And specifically, we're going to look at that bounce. So let's commence operations. Our objectives are the following. One, we want to determine the net force during that bounce back upwards. For net force, we need two variables, mass and acceleration. In addition, we also want to determine the tension force. So let's see how all of this is done. For starters, mass. After looking up the mass of the actors who portrayed these characters, the total mass is around 135 kilograms. Acceleration. This is the challenging part. If we don't assume constant acceleration, then the problem is very difficult to do. So the three variables we'll need today are initial speed, distance, and time. All right, so what did I do? Well, I went back to the video and I extracted two frames of the video. This first frame at time equals zero seconds is when Spider-Man and Mary Jane are basically stationary. The second frame, 12 frames later, is when they're bouncing back up. Now, to do this using YouTube, you use the period key and the comma key. The period key will move the video forward one frame at a time, and the comma key moves the video backward one frame at a time. As mentioned, the initial speed is zero. So at time equals zero seconds, Right over here, time equals zero seconds. Initially, Spider-Man and Mary Jane are nearly at rest. So we know our initial speed. Next, let's focus on time. This video was recorded at 25 frames per second. And I advanced the movie 12 frames later to generate this image. And so, 12 divided by 25 is 0.48 seconds. So we have our time. Now the challenging part is to get the distance. Well, to get the distance, I'm going to start off by making a line across the shoulders of this character. I've made a similar line here. And our goal is to get that distance. So how are we going to get that distance? Well, we use a ruler. And that distance is nearly four centimeters. It's just below four centimeters. But the problem is we need to convert that four centimeters into a real life distance. So we need a scale. So we're gonna use the actress's height as the scale. Now using a ruler, the actress's height on the screen is 3.8 centimeters. According to the internet, her actual height in real life is 1.7 meters. And so, to determine the distance, we do some math. Distance is equal to 1.7 meters times 4 centimeters over 3.8 centimeters. And the distance is 1.79 meters. All right, we have our three variables. Now we have to use a kinematic equation to solve for acceleration. This is the kinematic equation. I'd like you to pause the video right now, substitute those numbers, and see what you get for acceleration. All right, I hope you tried that. Substituting the distance for 1.79, the initial speed at zero, and the time, 0 0.48 seconds, we multiply 0 0.48 by 0 0.48 by half, we get decimal 1152. Of course, 0 multiplied by anything is 0. And dividing, we end up getting an acceleration of 15.54 meters per second squared. With significant digits, it's only 16. Why only two significant digits? Well, the actress's height was two significant digits. In addition, the ruler measurements were all to two significant digits. 
So the conclusion here is that as that bounce is taking place upwards, the acceleration is around 16 meters per second squared. To determine that force, we use Newton's second law. F net equals ma. And that works out to be 2,098 newtons. Once again, considering significant digits, 2,100 newtons, or two significant digits. Now, I'd like you to try to figure out the tension force. Please pause the video. Okay, hopefully you tried that. So the tension force clearly points upwards, gravity is opposing that, and that's the only two forces. Drag wouldn't really be a big factor here. So to figure out gravity, it's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. The mass was 135. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And that works out to 1,323 newtons. Now in this situation, the positive direction is upwards. Why upwards? Well, because that's the direction of movement. That's the direction of acceleration. And so when we write our F net statement, net means the sum of all forces. It'll be the tension force, subtract force of gravity, which is 1323. We know our F net is 2,098 newtons. And our overall tension is 3,421 newtons. Or in significant digits, 3,000. 400 newtons, two significant digits once again. So to put this number into perspective, a boxer, when they hit an opponent, can hit with that much force and even more so. So that gives you an idea that an average boxing punch can be as high as 3,400 newtons and even higher. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this inspires you to do your own analysis on physics in movies and perhaps even video games. Have a great day.